So Moses, we're at York Hall. I'm not, no, I'm, not, I'm not a star today, I'm not a star today. <laughs> not, not today, not today. I appreciate you trying to put me on though, appreciate you. Um, so we're at York Hall, I know you're here to see your teammate Royston. Uh, just, Hello. yeah. Hello, it's just Box Now. I've obviously, I've come to, mainly obviously to watch Royston, but obviously Lloyd, I was just mad, I was like, I was in the changing room. This might have been my, my second, yeah, it was my second fight as, a, as an amateur. And I just remember being in the same changing room as him. It was like, oh yeah, I've heard a few stories about you, blah, 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 blah. And then like, we've just kind of been following each other's career. So obviously Royston, like I've been to two Europeans with him, traveled the world with, with him, obviously through Team England. And now we've always end up back at the same gym. So same promoter, same everything. So it's kind of mad. Just how big of a, a prospect is Royston? Uh, he's big, he's huge. He's huge and I feel like with time it shall tell. Looking forward to the main event? That's going to be a scrap. That's going to be a scrap. And it was announced last week, your, your fight in, in Saudi, Dempsey McKean. How do you match up? I don't know. Like, the thing is, though, obviously, in my mind, I always go to a fight thinking I'm going to win. I'm going to win quite easily. And it kind of has been that. But it's obviously, when I turn up, he might shock me and the fight might go left. So like, I'm always kind of prepared. To, I'm a bit delusional. Until I get closer to the fight, I'm a bit more prepared of, of outcomes that might not be in my way. Before, be my way, sorry. Before the Marius Wack fight, everyone was saying, oh, this is the, the step up in class. This is the man that's going to take you all the rounds. And it didn't go that way. And then I beat Marius Wack and everyone was saying, oh, he's this, he's that anyway. It was like, we need another step up. Obviously, I'm fighting Dempsey McKean. Everyone's going to say, yeah, this is a good step up. Then I'll knock Dempsey McKean out and everyone's going to be like, ah, oh, but he hasn't boxed in, da, 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 do you know what I mean? So it's like, I'm just, I'm just here doing my job. And I've called, I've called out numerous of names, um, domestically and internationally. And this is the, this is the one fire that, that's, that's stepped up to the plate, so I'm kind of happy about that. Well, we've spoken before about, you know, a few names, like you mentioned there, maybe avoiding you. Is this a case of kind of one of the only fights you could get, get at that level? I, I don't know. I don't know, obviously, too much about that getting a fights bit, because obviously, obviously, my job is to get in the ring and box. So obviously, making fights and all that extra stuff, that's down to my team. And um, with your, the answer to your question, it's like you've got to put yourself in their shoes. Let's say I was to fight someone like Tony Fisher or someone like that, yeah. It's like, or even, or even like closer to that, like Joseph Parker and all them lot. Like, why would they want to fight me? It's like, they could possibly like end their career by fighting a 19 year old. They get no W's out of it. Cause it's like, if they win, they are supposed to do that. And if they lose, it's like, oh, I've lost a 19 year old. I can't bring my career back. So it's like, I kind of understand it. And that's why I like, I'm very appreciative of, um, of Dempsey McKean to take this fight. You mentioned Johnny Fisher there. He's in the building tonight. He just walked, just seen he just walked past you. Are you going to have an eye on, on his fight? Uh, sorry, one more time, sorry. You mentioned Johnny Fisher there. He's obviously just walked past you. He's in the building tonight. Are you going to have an eye on his fight in Saudi? No, because I'll be boxing myself. Listen, I'm not really too bothered of what other people do. I'm just focusing on my, on my thing. Like, listen, if Johnny was to win, lose, draw, whatever, like, I'll probably, I might watch the highlights the next morning or something, but I wouldn't really pay too much attention to it because obviously I'm here on my own career, my own path. And another teammate of yours, Fabio Wardley, just last week with a, a, an amazing knockout in Saudi. Oh, Fabio. What a puncher. What a puncher. Man can crack. Listen, I'll, I'll, I'll let you in a little story, yeah. I'll turn up to the gym and Fabio was training after me and he's warming up and I asked him, I said, Does, can Fraser bang? And he was like, nah, this next fight, I'm just going to walk through him. <laughs> what did he go and do? He just went and walked through him. So, like, i got to take my hat off to Fabio. And obviously, obviously, there's a clip surrounding, obviously, the internet with, obviously, Ben Davison telling him how he can do that. And, like, in due time, this the truth shall reveal itself. Were you surprised by that uh, first round? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I knew, like, obviously, I got told that he was going to walk through him, but I didn't think first round, like, to get, people are forgetting that 
Fraser Clark is this man with a full amateur pedigree, Olympics, Worlds, XYZ, XYZ. Fabio is a white collar boxer, and he's just come and done that. To get what I mean, and what's he top, like top ten in like most governing bodies? So, do you know what? You can, you can't do nothing but applaud. I agree. Another another amazing heavyweight in the Queensbury ranks, Moses. We look forward to seeing you uh, back out there in a couple of months. I'm looking forward to um, to put on a, some put a show on for you guys.